Today I'm going to show you how to create actions in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new redesign Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is brought to you by Arena Thompson who's our, one of our YouTube watchers and she asks, my question is about creating actions. How do we record actions the way they work and don't stop somewhere in the middle stating something like this layer doesn't exist? Thank you. And it's a great question. Creating actions in Photoshop can be really beneficial because it can save you a ton of time, but it's a little bit tricky because you have to do it just right so you don't get these weird error messages. So that's what today's all about. I'm gonna show you guys why it's important to create actions. We're gonna create a sample action and then I'm gonna give you guys this action that you can actually use on any of your photos. So jumping into Photoshop, we're gonna to explain to you what actions actually are and kind of how to use them. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to Window and then down to Actions. Make sure that's checked and you're gonna get something that looks just like this. Let's go ahead and close out. Now Photoshop comes with default actions like Vignette. So let's click on that and hit Play and just kind of see what happens. All right, the command Feather is currently not available. And this is one of those options that if the, and if an action hasn't been created exactly correctly or kind of like, you have to be kind of tricky and smart when you create an action. It's basically just gonna give you things like this. So I'm gonna hit continue and we'll see what happens. It created a couple layers, but it really didn't do anything that I wanted it to do. So, and that's probably because the action that was created just wasn't really that done that well in the first place, which is shame, shame Adobe, because this is a Photoshop default action. All right, well, let's go ahead and close that out. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to make a very simple action. So to start off with, we're gonna create a new folder here. All right, folder, and we're gonna call this Flurn Actions. And apparently I've got caps lock on. <laughs> there we go. All right, so our Flurn Actions folder. Then we're gonna create a new action. We're just gonna call this Test 1. And I'm gonna hit Record. Okay, so Test 1. Now what we're seeing here is basically we've got a recording going on. We've got everything else in Photoshop is normal, except if I do anything on my image, it's going to get recorded so I can do it over and over again. So let's do something really simple. I'm gonna hit Command J to duplicate the layer. And that says layer via copy right here. And so it's gonna show up. Every time I do something in Photoshop, it's gonna show up on this list. Now let's try transforming it. I'm gonna hit Command T to transform it. And then I'm gonna rotate it around, I don't know, 9.49 degrees and then hit that checkbox. And after I do that, we're gonna see transform current layer. All right, let's go ahead and stop this and see what that does. So I'm gonna hit stop. All I did in that action is layer via copy and transform the current layer. So if I wanna see that action happen over again, what I can do is click on this test one and I'm gonna hit play. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make another copy of that layer and it's gonna rotate that. I can hit play and it'll do it again. So it basically just does the exact same thing you did over and over again. And these can get really complex. You can actually schedule like, you know, 20 different tasks to happen in the same exact action. Now, so far things are pretty simple, right? But what happens when you wanna get a little bit, like a little bit more in depth? Let's just delete those two layers. You can actually go back and start recording again. So let's hit, I'm gonna record this and it's gonna keep recording on the same, on the same action, okay? Now I'm gonna click on my background layer and then I'm gonna hit shift delete and I'm gonna fill this with black and we're gonna hit okay. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna hit stop and then we're good to go. So now we see layer via copy, transform current layer, select layer background and fill. Now original question was what happens when you, sometimes when you try to create actions, you'll get all these errors like layer one doesn't exist or background layer doesn't exist. Well, let's check this out. I'm gonna hit delete on my background layer so we no longer have a background layer. We're gonna go back to our test one and I'm gonna hit play and it's gonna make a layer via copy. Then it's gonna transform and rotate it but then it's gonna say object layer background is not currently available because I deleted it. So we're just gonna have to say either stop or continue. In this case, I'll hit continue and it'll just happen to fill my current layer with black. So that's the issue is you have to be kind of tricky on how you create these because if you create an action based on one document where you're, you know, you're working with layer 10, 11, 12, and 13, but you go to actually apply this action on a different document that doesn't have layers 10, 11, 12, and 13, it's not gonna do anything. So that's why you have to be a little bit tricky about creating these actions. So let's go ahead and delete that layer 
we're going to, um, well, I'm just going to go back to my history here, and I'm going to go all the way up to the top to our original image. There we go. If you didn't know that you could do that, that's cool, by the way. If you open your history dialog, you don't have to go back in steps. If you go all the way to the very, very top, you can click on that, and it'll take you back to the very beginning. So you don't have to close the image out and reopen it. OK. So obviously, this isn't going to work, right? This select layer background, if I don't have a background layer, that's not going to work. So I can either delete that step if I want to. I can hit delete selection. Or I can just design my background or design my action in a way that's a little bit more intelligent. And I'm going to show you guys the really cool tricks to making your actual actions a lot more intelligent so they'll work on basically any photo. So the trick to making intelligent actions or actions that are going to work on any image is to not use anything that's specific. So never say in your action, you know, choose layer three and then do something to layer three. You never want to have it actually say choose a certain layer because that's going to make it specific to that layer. So the best way to create actions is to do it in a really non-specific way. So I'm going to show you guys some awesome tips on how to do that. So let's go ahead and create a new action here. We're just going to hit this new action. We're going to call this test two. OK, we're going to hit record. So the first thing that I want to do, I'm going to resize this, because this is a sharpening action that I'm about to create. So we're going to go ahead and resize this. Right now, my pixel's size, it's huge, right? Uh, I'm going to go to image size. We're at, here we go, 7,000 something pixels. That's way too big. So we're going to say our width, you know what? I just want this to be 150 pixels, OK? Nice and small. Maybe let's just let's call it an even 200. There we go. We're going to hit OK. So an even 200 pixels, and now our image is nice and small. Let's go ahead and zoom in all the way to 100%. You know what? No, that was too big. Let's just undo that. And then I want to go down to image size, and I want to change it. I just decided, you know what? 200 is too small. But see what it's doing here? Image size, and then undo. It actually showed up in my action. Select previous history state. So I'm going to hit stop, and I'm going to say, you know what, these two right here, I'm going to shift click them. I'm going to say, no, delete those two, because I'm just going to decide again. So you can go through and delete these actions if you need to. All right, so still in test two, I'm going to hit record. Now I want to say image, image size. You know what, let's call this 500 pixels. 200 was way too small. All right, 500 pixels. There we go. You know what, that's, mm, OK. Zooming in or out, that's not going to change much. All right, that's still too small. <laughs> I didn't plan on that. That wasn't supposed to be part of the episode. Let's go ahead and hit undo. All right, now we are going to do this a third time. Image, image size, and I'm going to hit 800 pixels. All right, that's actually a pretty good size for what we want to do. So 800 pixels. So we've got our image, image size at 800 pixels. Now, I want to do some sharpening to this image. And the way I like to sharpen oftentimes is to create a stamp visible layer and then make that into a high pass and then do a soft light layer on that, which is quite a bit of steps to happen. And uh, so we actually need to show you guys how to do that in like a in creative way. All right, so the first thing we're going to do when we create a high pass layer is create a new layer. So Shift Option Command N is going to make a new layer. So there's make layer. Now, make layer is always going to be available to us. You can do that no matter where you are in your Photoshop, no matter where you are in your layers, make layer is always going to be available to you. All right, the next key is the Shift Option Command E, and this is a stamp visible layer. So Shift Option Command E, that's also always going to be available to you after you make a new layer. OK, so you want to create these commands that are always going to be available to you. OK. So the next thing I want to do is desaturate this. So Shift Command U is going to desaturate. And that's because when I go to sharpen, I don't want this to mess up my colors. I just want it to work with the lightness and the darkness. OK, now the next thing I'm going to show you guys here is I'm going to click here on like normal. And I'm just going to try like go down a couple, like you know, try a few different blending modes and stuff like that, like lighter color, la, 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 la. And then I'm going to try to like change my opacity and like, no, I'm going to change it down, doing this sort of stuff. Well, this is like incredibly inefficient in your layers. See, every time I make a tiny little change, it actually goes through and records all those things, right? I don't want that to happen. So there's a better way. If you're going to change your blending mode or your opacity, there's a better way to do those things. OK, so let's hit Stop. And I'm going to Shift click all those layers, all those commands, and we're going to delete them, OK? We're going to delete those. Let's just change this back to normal and back to 100%. OK, 
Now we're going to start recording again. So still, everything we've done up until this point is available at any time. We've got image size, make a layer, merge visible, and desaturate. So let's hit record again. Now instead of going and changing your blending mode here and changing our opacity here, what we're going to do is double click on our layer. OK, so double clicking on our layer, let's just try to see everything that we're going to do. OK, here I'm free to just change my layer blend mode as I want every time I'm changing this. But because no actual changes have been applied, they're not showing up here in my action. I can see them because I've got a preview of my layer style, right? So I can see all these changes. Like if I wanted to change this to overlay, I can see what that looks like, and I can change my opacity here as well. So if I, what I wanted to do is figure out, OK, I wanted to be an overlay layer at 26% and stuff like that, all I would have to do is set those in my layer style. And I actually do want this to be an overlay, but I want this to be 100%. Okay, So we're going to hit OK. And it's going to make all those changes at the exact same time. So that's one really smart thing that you can do when creating actions. All right, set the current layer. So now it's setting this current layer to overlay. All right, now we're going to go to Filter. I'm going to go down to Other. And then we're going to go to High Pass. OK, and we're going to choose a radius here that just looks like, eh, you know, looks like a good amount of sharpening. This is a sharpening action that we're creating. So we're going to hit OK there. There we go. We've got our high pass layer. Now let's say we want to do, um, you know, one more thing. Let's just create a new layer. So Shift Option Command N will create a new layer. And I don't know what we want to do with this layer. I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and we can fill this with a color. So I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and I'm going to say Fill with a color. So this is another smart way to do it, is try to use as many dialogues as you can. So instead of like choosing a foreground color and then going up to the Fill command, I'm going to choose to actually use the Fill command here and then choose my color. All right, we'll just choose like something like this, a nice warm color. There we go. Hit OK. Hit OK. So we've got this layer is now filled with that color. And then let's say I want to warm this up a little bit. OK, so we're going to double click on here. And then I'm going to change this layer from normal down to soft light. And we're going to change our opacity down to like 10%. Let's type in 10 and hit OK. All right, pretty cool. So let's go ahead and hit stop and talk about what we've done. So we've changed the image size. We've made a new layer. We've stamp, made a stamp visible. We've desaturated it. We set the current layer to a, an overlay. And then we did a high pass. And then we created this soft light layer. So let's just turn those off and on. Let's zoom in so you guys can actually see. There we go. The actual the sharpening that happened. There we go. So we sharpened this image up and warmed it up a little bit at the same time. right? So let's go ahead and say, all right, we're done with that. Let's go. I'm going to go back all the way to my history and go all the way to the very top. Okay. So what this does is like this is exactly how this image would have been when I opened it up. So I'm going to hit test two, and we're going to hit play. This is going to test it out. Like, did this actually work? So let's hit play, and we should have the exact same thing. Let's just zoom in to make sure we do. All right. Uh, command zero will fit your image on your screen, by the way. And we do. It's now sized correctly. We've got it sharpened, and we've got these two layers that it's warming and adding that texture. So that's really cool. Any image that you wanted to do from here on out, you could sharpen, resize, and make a little bit warmer just by hitting play. Um, let's make it a little bit more complex. I want to do, I want to do something that like says like non-specific. What happens if I wanted to change these layer orders, or if I wanted to group them, or things like that? Okay. Well, let's go to set current layer here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the record button. So it's going to start recording again. Now, you'll notice, let's say I wanted to click on layer one, and I wanted to change the opacity to that. So I'm going to hit click on layer one. And then let's just go in here and lower the opacity. All right, now here's our issue. Because remember, we said we wanted to make everything non-specific, as non-specific as possible. But when I clicked on layer one, it says right here, select layer, layer one. And remember earlier when we selected that background layer, and it was like, you don't have a background layer. Well, this is what you want to get away from when you're creating your actions. You never want to just click on a layer, because if there's not another layer that says layer 1, or if layer 1 happens to be different, then it's going to completely throw off your action. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Let's hit Stop, and I'm going to show you a better way to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and delete those things. 
delete those selections. I'm going to go back all the way to the very beginning again. We're going to hit play so it takes you to exactly where it should be. There we are. So here, instead of hitting, actually clicking on layer one, what you can do is you can actually hold down the Alt or the Option key and use your open and close brackets. And that's the keyboard shortcut for select backward layer. So instead of saying select layer one, which is, has to be called layer one or it won't work, it's now just selecting the layer underneath it. So there are keyboard shortcuts that build in so you can actually select one layer down or one layer up. Let's hold Alt or Option and hit the close bracket now. And now I'm selecting layer two. So these are the keys that you have to use when you're creating an action or else it's just going to get really confused. Now, I can't just click on both of these layers and group them together either. I have to use a keyboard shortcut that's nonspecific. So what I'm going to do is hold down Alt or Option, OK? And then I'm going to hold down my Shift key. So holding down those two keys. And now I'm going to click the open bracket. So what that does is selected the backward layer. But because I already had my for forward layer selected, holding down the Shift key means they're both selected now, OK? So Again, selecting the backward layer, and it's selecting them both. Now, if I wanted to, I could hit Command-G, and I could group those together. All right, and we could double click on the group and call this Sharpen and Color. Hit Enter, and it would set that current group as just that. All right, let's hit Stop, and let's see if this works. So I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning here. I know this is really complex, and for those of you guys who don't plan on creating many actions, maybe you're like, well, this is, it gets very specific. But for those of you guys who have created actions, this should save you a ton of time. Just do everything as nonspecific as you can. So even these layers, like select backward layer, select forward layer, and then backward layer, I did that a couple times. So I could actually go in there and delete those if I wanted to. But I'm not going to. All right, let's click there. I'm going to hit play. And it should do everything that I wanted, including group them together and name it sharpen and color. Now, I'll give you guys one more really cool hint right here. Here where I had the high pass adjustment layer, OK? Because this image is sized this way, I wanted my radius to be 3.4 3 pixels. And as the action is now, every time I hit play on this action, it's going to use that exact same radius. But what happens if I want to change that radius? What happens if I want a different radius and I want to be able to choose it every single time? Well, all I have to do is click on this little box right here, and that's going to make sure that I actually bring up the dialog. So I'll be able to choose what I want. And if I want to create a little bit of a note to myself or to someone else, well, all I have to do, let's just go right here. I'm going to click on Insert Stop. And I'm going to call this Choose High Pass Radius. And we're going to hit Allow Continue. There we are. And we're going to hit OK. So after it sets my current layer, it's going to include this stop. And then it's going to include High Pass with this dialog box on. So let's see what this looks like now. So we're going to go back to Test 2. And I'm going to hit play. All right, so here we go. This choose high pass radius. I just typed that. Look, and it looks like an Adobe Photoshop dialog box. So we're going to hit continue. There we go. And now, because I chose this little dialog box there, I can actually change my radius. So I'm not going to be limited to 3.4 pixels literally every time I do this action. Hit OK, and it's going to run through everything else and give us our final output there. So really, really cool. So after you guys have created your action and you use very non-specific things, you like the keyboard shortcut to select forward layer and backward layer and double clicking on that layer to then choose the properties and then hit OK. Make sure it works on this image and then open up a completely different image. Something done on a portrait image is going to look totally different on a landscape image. So I'm going to hit Command O. Let's just go ahead and open an image and uh, we're going to do from our last episode where we taught you guys how to use the liquify tool. OK, totally different image. It's a different size. It's a portrait style image. And now we want to see, let's hit F to full screen this. Now we want to see, is this action going to work on this too? And you know what? Just to show you guys that like, you know, it, it really, if you build your action correctly, what you should be able to do, let's just make this a little bit brighter. You should be anywhere in your image. So I created a new layer, and then I created a curves adjustment layer. You should be anywhere along the progress of your image and still be able to apply this action. You shouldn't have to start off with a background layer. That was um, a big lesson we learned. OK, so let's hit play. So here it's going to say, choose high pass radius. I'm going to hit continue. All right, that looks good. I'm going to hit command plus a little bit so I can actually see what I'm doing. It's going to default at 3.4, but let's say this one, I want it to be 4.1. Hit enter, sharpen in color. 
there we go. So now our image, let's go down to image size, is a width of 800 because we included that in the actual action. We've got in here warming and sharpening, and they're both grouped together. So now I know, because I've applied this on a couple different images, that any image I open, if I want it to be sized at 800 pixels, I want to warm it up, and I want to sharpen it, and I want to choose my sharpen, that I can use this action, and all I have to do is hit play on any image, and it's going to do all of those things for me. Cool. So I want you guys to go out and create your own actions. Again, anything you're doing over and over again, these actions are going to really help out. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to save this action, and then you can download this exact same action and use it on your images. So here in my actions dialog, I'm going to delete this test one action. Okay? We don't need that anymore. Remember, that was our test that didn't work. Let's just double cl click here, and I'm going to call this sharpen 800 warm. <laughs> a beautiful name for an action. Sharpen 800 warm. OK, now I want to save this action. So I'm not going to click on the action. I'm actually going to save on the folder here. So we're going to click on our folder. We're going to go down to our dialog box, and I'm going to hit Save Actions. All right, now what we're going to do, it's going to give you the option to like save it in your presets. I'm going to instead save it right here in our Flurn episodes. All right, there we go. This is this episode, and we're going to ca just call this Flurn Action. So why not? So we're going to hit Save. So when you guys go to actually import these actions, if you go on flurn.com and you download this, all you have to do is click on your, go to Windows and Actions, make sure you open that up, click on this little dialog box here, and go down here to Load Actions. Okay? And then load the action that you download, flurnactions.atn, hit Open, and it's going to give you exactly the same thing. So now I've got two copies of the exact same thing. I don't need two copies, but that's how it's going to show up in your Photoshop. Guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope this helped out. And thank you for everyone who's asking questions on how to do things in Photoshop. That's how we get our ideas for episodes. So if there's something you would love to learn in Photoshop, please leave it in a comment down below. We're going to create amazing episodes from your ideas. And if you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can stay up to date and receive free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week. And share this with your friends. If there's anyone in the world you might think would benefit from some Photoshop knowledge, hit the share button. It's somewhere on YouTube. <laughs> they keep moving them around, but it's somewhere on there. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. <laughs> that was like 28 minutes. I hope it recorded the whole thing.